The other big story in the Olympics, aside from a man competing, but gladly also losing to a bunch of girls, uh, was the story of Simone Biles, the women's Olympic gymnast, quitting right after the beginning of the uh, team vault event. And now there was a lot of question of, oh, is is she okay? Um, why did, you know, is there something wrong with her? What, did she get injured? Why'd she quit? And it came out, well, it's not because she's injured. It's because she just doesn't feel like it today. She just isn't in the right headspace. She's just depressed. And Simone's line was, well, you know, I worked for years to hone my skill. You didn't. <clears throat> and I'm doing this Olympics for myself. So I don't owe you anything. And it's, in a way, all right, yes. Did I work for years to become an Olympic-level gymnast? Did you? Did any of us watching on TV? No. Or, well, the large majority of us, anyway. I didn't. You didn't. But, in a way... So, yes. Did we work for years to hone that level of skill? No. Do we have that level of skill? No. But you actually do owe us something, Simone. You are going there as an Olympic athlete representing the United States. It is actually your job to go to Tokyo and live and represent all of us mediocre, mediocre schmucks over here in the States. We are sending you, we are sending SUNY Lee, we are sending all the athletes that we sent in place of all us mediocre nobodies. And we are expecting you to go out there and do what you do best in place of us. Also, you do owe us something in the sense that you are a professional gymnast. It is your job. You chose to have the job. You went through all the blood, sweat, and tears, the innumerable hours to hone that skill. And you made the choice to have your job be going out on the Olympic stage, or on the gymnastic stage, Olympic or otherwise, and getting paid so people can watch you do amazing stuff. Just like people like Patrick Mahomes made the decision when he made the, when he signed that contract with the Chiefs that he was going to get paid millions of dollars to go out on a football field every Sunday and be really good at football. If you if you went to a if you let's say you you went to a a Chiefs game since simply because you know I, I I'm Patrick Mahomes is one of the biggest names in sports right now biggest names in football. If you went to a Chiefs game hoping to get to see Patrick Mahomes. Do the ama play the amazing football that he is capable of. And then one and a half minutes into the game, he goes over to the sideline and says to Andy Reid, Hey, coach, I'm just not feeling it today. I feel kind of depressed. I just feel generally sad. It isn't because anybody in my family died or anything. I just don't feel like it today. You got gypped out of getting to watch my Patrick Mahomes play amazing football for four quarters because he wasn't feeling it today. Now, there's the argument 
that, well, she was, you know, she, she was having, pro you could tell, watching her some of her practice faults, where she was losing where she was in the air, and she had some kind of strange landings that were, you know, she would land and then take a really big step back, because she did, she was not landing the way she was intending, initially, and you could say, well, you know, she could seriously hurt herself, and I'm not saying that she needs to risk life and limb to go out and and perform. But there is honor in doing something difficult. President Kennedy said, we choose to go to the moon not because it is easy, but because it is hard. So, were we supposed to celebrate, would we, are we supposed to have celebrated the science, the scientists at NASA who said, you know what, we've given up on going to the moon, it's just too stressful, uh, I'm losing too much sleep, it's affecting, it's affecting my mental health too much, so we're just going to give up on going to the moon because, you know, it, it, it's making me depressed, it's giving me a case of the sads. No. You're on the cutting edge of science and you give up because it's too hard? Yeah, and lots of things in life are too hard. Um, one of the most famous Olympic moments, I believe, came back in like the 1980s. I don't remember the name of the gymnast, but uh, she was on the vault. And on a previous attempt, she felt something in one of her legs pop. And she keeps going. She does the vault. She lands. It might, it might have been on the landing that she heard it pop. I'm not, I can't quite remember. I was not born at the time when this happened. When she goes over to the coach and says, I felt something pop. My leg hurts. And he says, we're almost there. If, if you can perform another good vault, we will win gold. And she says, alright, I'll, I'll do another one. Okay, he bandages her up. She goes out there in pain. She runs. She does the vault. She goes, she goes on one little hop because she stands up on one leg because her other leg is in so much pain. And she does it. She does it. She, she gets the score she needs. The U.S. wins gold. That is doing something amazing. That is doing something hard. That is doing something in spite of the difficulty. A few years back, there was a football player. I don't remember for what team. Uh, like the, the Thursday, Friday, I don't know, Saturday before the game. Just a few days before the game. Sadly, him and his wife suffered a, mis a miscarriage of one of their children. And he did not say anything about it on social media. And he privately told his coach, and he said, Coach, I am going to, I have elected that I will play on Sunday. And he went out there, and he played. I believe they won the game, too. And he did not say anything about it through the entire game, to the media. It wasn't until the Monday or Tuesday after, like the day or, or the next day after, that he finally put something out on Twitter about it. Unconnected to the football game. And people were like, oh my gosh. He he played on Sunday just after him and his wife suffered a miscarriage. That's so sad. The courageous thing for him was going out and playing football in spite of the tragedy that happened in his family. Now, am I saying that I would have, you know, criticized him for making the decision not to play football right after his wife suffered a miscarriage? No. I, I mean, I totally understand. Yes, that's a tragedy in your family. But the courageous thing is doing that, is going out and doing your job in spite of the tragedy that just happened. The courageous thing is not taking a day off because of the tragedy.
we should we should celebrate people for doing things that are difficult and not celebrate them for caring about their mental health and and quitting on what their job is and what their duty is do not celebrate quitters Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, just in my last video, um, can we call him Caitlin? I got a comment from Wayne Pino, I believe it's pronounced. Um, Wayne, you tell me if I'm pronouncing this, your last name right or wrong if you're watching this. Um, I saw your comment, but I couldn't hold it because when I clicked on the notification, um, it wasn't there. So if you want to comment again, maybe it'll get through this time on this video, or on the last one, I don't care. But, uh, I'd love to hear from you, man. And, uh, to, every, to Wayne and everyone else, thank you all for watching. Comment, like, subscribe. Of course, Wayne, you're already subscribed. Okay, just comment and like the good stuff. You know the whole spiel. Thank you all for watching. So... Instead of saying the regular goodbye, I'm going to go with the German. Auf Wiedersehen.